Hi, this is my presentation for Bastion Community. Uh, I'm competing in the DAO category. I'm really excited to share this with you. I think that there's a glaring hole in terms of what DAOs can do today on Realms. And I think that uh, the tech that I've developed um, really expands the scope of what DAOs can do, how they can uh, deploy their treasury, how they can interact with DeFi apps, a bit about me, my name is Tristan. I ended up uh, being an early hire at Jet Protocol. We worked on our governance module, which is a lot like Realms.today. It's uh, the backend is using SPL governance, but there's also a staking module on top. Uh, so I got a lot of experience with the SPL governance program and I saw how it was really powerful, but at the same time, there are some limitations that I thought weren't getting addressed. As soon as you introduce a DAO, the DAO can't log on to Mango Markets. They can't connect their wallet. They're extremely limited in what they can do. I'm gonna talk about the Bastion wallet and how that can improve uh, the situation quite dramatically. Currently, there are some integrations with Realms.today. So you can create your DAO, you can deploy your uh, tokens. Let's say you have a treasury, you can deposit USDC on Solend. You can stake with Marinade. Uh, there's, you can sort of trade with Mango Markets. So as you see, uh, there's approximately 129 DEXs on Solana. I pulled these numbers from uh, the Solana ecosystem. Uh, there's 129 registered DEXs. Let's just say that there's 10 or 15 DEXs that are really worth their weight, but only three of them are accessible through Realms.today. That being Foresight, Friction, and Mango. If you look at lending protocols, there's a single lending protocol being Solend that you can use through Realms.today. And in total, there's only about 12 protocols that integrate with Realms.today. So that's really poor uh, penetration. If I'm a DAO, what protocols can I use? What options are available to me? If there's new protocols being developed, I'm not able to take advantage of them. So if there's a developer building a protocol, they have to spend extra time going into realms.today, adding their protocol integration to this, to the realms front end. And it's an incredible amount of man hours that'll have to be spent. If you truly want all of the different protocols to be accessible to DAOs. And I think that that is not sustainable. I think that there should be a much better way. The fundamental problem is that there's a treasury on chain and that treasury is controlled by a PDA that's owned by the SPL governance program. And there's no user interface where that PDA can act like a regular wallet and connect to any typical front end. You know, on Mango Markets, you have beautiful candlestick charts, you have real time price data, but all of that is unavailable through the Realms interface. Let's say there's 20 protocols, there's four multi-sig solutions, there needs to be 20 times four integrations between all the protocols and all the multi-sig solutions. So there must be a better way. All a protocol developer has to do to support DAOs is to add the Bastion wallet adapter. And that'll allow users to connect a DAO to their front end. So this is a general purpose solution. It'll generally work with any type of front end, any type of transaction. We can take their transaction and convert it to a multi-sig proposal. So let's get into it. I'm gonna do a series of demos. Uh, we're gonna create a DAO, we're going to fund it, and then we're gonna use those funds controlled by the DAO to trade on Mango Markets and lend and borrow on Jet. So I have a fork of the realms.today front end and I have a wallet with about 100 sol. This should be good enough for a DAO treasury. So I'm gonna create a DAO. I have forked the realms front end. I've also forked the SPL governance program. The only change that I've made to the governance program, this allows us to just submit one instruction at a time. Those transactions are smaller. It can all fit uh, without hitting any limits. I've also had to optimize how SPL governance CPIs into the target program. So it's just gonna be a one of one multi-sig for now. So here's my DAO. It's using the um, modified uh, SPL governance program. Again, this is just to avoid transaction size limits. 
I want to deposit onto Solan. So the way that that's done right now is you go scroll through, you have this huge list of possible actions. It's quite ugly. Solend is the only protocol that's supported by uh, realms.today currently. I want to deposit, then I'd have to select the governance. USDC, and I'm going to say, I'm going to deposit 10,000. And then I add my proposal. But the problem is, in this view, I don't see what my interest rates are. I don't see how much liquidity the pool has. I don't see how my deposit will affect the interest rates that I, that I will receive. I don't see um, what all, any of the other pools are. It really looks nothing like the Solend front end that I'm used to. So DAOs have this very foreign, very clunky interface. It's just pretty terrible. So there's a better way to do this. So instead, I'm going to use Bastion and I'm going to connect to a DAB. So I already have a treasury and I'm just going to send some Sol to that treasury. I'm going to send 51 Sol. Make sure we're on mainnet. Yes, we are. Test and prod. I'd like to get some USDC. So I'm going to go to Mango Markets. This is a forked version of Mango. The only differences that I've made to this is I've added my wallet adapter, Bastion, and I have slightly reduced the transaction size. I've just split some things off into separate transactions to give me some headroom uh, because Bastion uses a little bit of overhead. We're no longer just submitting a transaction that directly calls Mango. What'll happen is SPL governance will call into Mango, so that adds a bit of overhead. So let's connect this to my DAO. And the way we do that is we select the Bastion wallet, and then we have this wallet connect interface. So I'm gonna copy my wallet connect link, and I'm going to paste that right here, and I'm going to connect. Here I go, mango, mango.bastion community. So I'm gonna approve that, and now we're connected. My treasury is 7SV, and if I look on mango at the top right, 7SV. So I'm gonna create an account, Sol, I'm gonna deposit. 15. So it says user rejected the request, but let's go back to the DAO. And if I scroll down, I have this transaction from Mango. So uh, the program ID, this must be the Mango mainnet program. Uh, there's several instructions here. There's actually several transactions, but we can execute all of these transactions. So this is a transaction to create a Mango account and deposit 15 sol. So let's add this proposal. I'll give it a name add the proposal and now our proposal is being created and our proposal will have a transaction for mango all right so here's our proposal i'm able to vote on it so i'm going to go vote yes all right and so now i'm going to execute this once i run this we'll head back to mango and see if we've deposited our treasury sol into a mango account controlled by the treasury i'd like to remind that i've never pulled my sol out of the dao all of this is transactions and assets that are controlled by the DAO. So if I go back and I refresh the page and I go back to my account, I have some Sol in here. This Mango account is owned by the SPL Governance Treasury. This is the 7SV Treasury that we just created in SPL Governance. This is a different PUBG than my wallet. My wallet does not control this account but I use the Mango front end to deposit funds from my DAO. So let's do something fun. So let's uh, sell some Sol for USDC. Just to prove that this works, so I'm gonna create a new transaction. I'm gonna name it Sell Sol on Mango. As you can see, the treasury is 7SV, which we're still connected as. I'm gonna go sell some Sol. Let's short some perps. So our transaction went through, let's go back. Here's the Mango transaction. Uh, it starts with the compute budget instruction and then it calls into Mango. All right, so it's executed. All right, so here we go. We've shorted five Sol. This is the treasury controlled by SPL governance that is shorted five Sol. And if we scroll up, we're still connected to the treasury. So this looks like it works. Let's do some more demos. Let's trade Spot on Radium, just to prove that this isn't just Mango, but we have all sorts of um, other front ends that we can trade on. 
So this is a fork of the Radium Dex. The only changes I've made is I've added the Bastion Wallet. This is one line of code that the developer has to add. Uh, I have also reduced transaction size slightly. And then there's one other change that I've made here. There's a call to get associated token address. That takes a parameter where it allows the owner off curve. We have to set that to true because the owner of all of these tokens is now a PDA that's controlled by SPL governance, which means that the owner is off the curve. So um, we just have to do that little fix there. So let's uh, trade spot on Serum through Radium. Take our URL, connect it to realms.today. All right, so here we go. Radium is trying to connect with us. Let's approve that. And now let's check our treasury is 7SV. As you can see, 7SV is connected. Here's our Radium transaction. Again, there's very little that a protocol developer like Radium would have to do to support this. It's basically adding the wallet adapter. And then you can support DAOs with as little as one line of code. There's no extra work that a protocol developer has to do to support this. At the moment, they have to add the Bastion wallet adapter. But in the future, with the Solana wallet standard, uh, front ends will be able to de detect the wallets injected through Chrome extensions. So they won't even have to add the wallet adapter. When address lookup tables are implemented, then we don't have to worry about transaction size anymore. All right, so here's our unsettled USDC balance. How about we just collect that? We're already connected, so we don't have to go through the wallet connect step. Let's just click settle. All right, it's sent. Here's our instruction to settle our USDC balance. When we're done this, we can check back on Radium and we should have USDC in our wallet. And we should be able to even see the USDC through realms.today. Here we go, 86 USDC. We go to our tokens. Here we go, USDC, 86. And we also have 33 SOL now. So I'd like to deposit USDC on JET. Here we go, Bastion. JET protocol is connecting. Let's approve that. So here we go, 7SV is our treasury. We should be able to see 33 SOL, 86 JET. I would like to deposit some of this. So let's deposit. So the transaction went through. Here we go, transaction. The program ID is JET program V1. Okay, so I've just created a proposal to use JET protocol, and I'd like to remind you that JET has no integration with Realms.today, yet DAOs on Realms.today are able to use JET like any regular normal user would. All right, let's execute this. When we head back to JET v1, we should be able to see it update in real time because JET uses WebSockets. There we go, in real time. So here's the code for JET where we're trying to deposit. So the way this particular protocol does it is it creates a random key pair and it initializes a token account at that key pair. So we have this key pair, this key pair eventually signs the transaction, but we don't have access to that key pair. So when it's time to execute that transaction, we're not able to produce a signature. The front end will submit a regular transaction that doesn't have any SPL governance instructions in it. So we have to, after the transaction has been signed by this key pair, transform it, with an, which invalidates the signature. So we have to create our own key pair to sign it. What we do is program will produce a new transaction with a new pub key uh, that still creates a token account, but at a key pair that we can actually sign for. All right, so here's this pesky signature in our deposit salt transaction. We're just going to submit this and Realms and Bastion and SPL Governance will just take care of it. It'll just work. Despite that signature potentially breaking the transaction and, and creating a signature validation error, it'll fix it up and it'll just work. So this is an integration with Realms.today and I'd just like to show you that we also have a integration with the Goki multisig, just to prove that this isn't a one-trick pony, you know, 
SPL governance is a type of multi-sig program and Goki is another type of multi-sig program. You can really target any kind of backend, whether it's SPL or Goki. So all of the code is hosted on GitHub, Bastion multi-sig slash multi-sig is the main repo. Uh, there's several components we had to do to get this working. I had to fork SPL governance to uh, split up uh, transactions when you're you know, proposing transactions. I had to create a partial signers program that handles random key pairs that get generated and sign transactions. Let's say you're just creating a account at a random address. There's a custom wallet adapter, which as you saw was a fork of Wallet Connect. I've had to modify Wallet Connect pretty extensively. Um, wallet Connect V2 is the only one that supports Solana, but currently they're in beta. All of their examples didn't work. Um, I had to, first of all, get something that actually works on Solana, and then I had to modify the Solana protocol used by Wallet Connect to fit this use case, which ferries uh, full transactions back and forth. And then I also had to create a transaction interpreter that takes a transaction that is produced by a front end like Mango or Jet and then modifies it and wraps it in an SPL governance instruction or wraps it in a Goki instruction so that it can behave through multisig. There were many, many uh, fixes and patches that I had to do to make it support as many different types of transactions that a front end can throw at it. Any transaction that a front end can send to realms.today should be executable by realms.today and I think I did very well in uh, doing that. Each of the front ends that I've shown you I've had to fork, I've had to add um, the wallet adapter, I've had to, in some cases, reduce the transaction size by splitting instructions into separate transactions. And there's a specific API call called uh, get associated token address. I had to pass in an extra parameter to allow that to be a PDA because the wallet is a PDA. So all of this is available on mainnet today. It's also deployed on devnet. The SPL governance program is deployed on mainnet. It'd be great to add the Bastion integration into uh, realms.today. Uh, the next logical step is to convert Bastion into a Solana wallet standard Chrome extension so that uh, we don't have to fork Mango or Radium. Uh, a user can just install uh, a Bastion Chrome extension and then they can generally just connect any uh, front end to their DAO treasury. You can now connect Realms and the treasury pub key of your Realms DAO to a front end. And it shows the Realms pub key in the front end and it can sign transactions and behave as if that DAO on Realms is any regular user. And I think that that is extremely powerful. Bastion has a use case for institutions where the institution can keep a high amount of security for their funds and where the institution would be able to interact with any protocol that they would like, regardless of if that protocol is so new that they don't have a Realms integration or if they will never support a Realms integration in the future. And seed investment would be very useful in exploring that. And then there's also a really interesting use case with XNFTs. So what an XNFT is, is it's basically a front end and all of your front end TypeScript and React code is uploaded into the data of an NFT. Uh, you can view this XNFT through the backpack wallet, but it could really be, uh, you know, XNFTs could be viewed by any wallet. So the use case with XNFTs is that you have this Bastion wallet. Uh, the Bastion wallet can display XNFTs. The Bastion wallet connects to a Realms DAO or a Goki multisig or any other kind of multisig program. Then in the wallet, you can open up a XNFT and any transactions that are created in the XNFT are automatically converted to proposals in your DAO. This, this kind of technology has all sorts of use cases and the Realms Today uh, integration is just scratching the surface. So this wraps up the Bastion presentation. I hope that you found this interesting and see the potential use cases that I see. All of the code is open source. I believe that this uh, Bastion technology that I've developed really supercharges DAOs and allows them to have really rich interactions with the Solana ecosystem. Thanks.